There's no denying we all love to eat out. Street food has become a part of our lives, especially in urban areas, for many reasons. It's easily available everywhere, it's cheap, and most of all, it's delicious. While most vendors nowadays adhere to the health and hygiene guidelines and try their best to provide great quality, clean and scrumptious food, it's not always the case. Out in the streets, you'll come across all kinds of disgusting things being sold as edibles. Some may look fine on the surface, but the way they're made, certain ingredients used in them and the poor hygiene of places where they're made will make you want to push a finger in your throat and throw up what you've consumed. From the gross and unhygienically prepared street food to food fried in oil obtained from sewers, we're going to tell you about the most horrifying facts about certain food that you definitely won't ever want to put in your mouth again. But first, take a moment to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications by clicking the small bell icon below the video. By doing so, you're signing up for an endless supply of informative and interesting videos. Who wouldn't want that, right? Number 10. Insects in your food. Have you ever thought about eating insects? We all know that in certain cultures, these tiny creatures form a regular part of the cuisine. But if you don't belong to one of these cultures, we're sure that you'll be grossed out by the idea of eating insects as we are, if not more. Swallowing a beetle or just having to munch on grasshopper limbs is the kind of thing you end up doing in a nightmare or watch your favorite actor do in a survival thriller, or as we like to call it, a horror film. But what if we tell you that insects have been a regular constituent of many food items you've been consuming without knowing it? Don't believe us? We get it. Who would want to be told the horrifying reality that they've been eating insects all their life? But it's true. Check out the ingredient list of your favorite candy or that strawberry yogurt you can't get enough of. If the ingredient list includes a coloring agent called E120, rest assured that you've been eating cochineals, and that too, in huge numbers. This insect is native to Latin America and is whitish with a soft, rounded body. It generally feeds on plants. But what makes this insect stand out is the ability to produce carminic acid to protect itself from predators. This carminic acid has a beautiful crimson red color. So, for commercial purposes, these cochineals are raised in special kinds of cactus plantations. They're then harvested from these plants before being dried in the oven or under the sun. After drying, these insects are crushed and immersed in boiling water for a few seconds. This last step leads to the extraction of the color, and the harvested substance is then used as a cosmetic, especially in the food coloring industry. This coloring agent is used by thousands of brands out there, mainly in the coloring of crusts of certain cheeses, sausage crusts, and in drinks like the famous sodas we consume on a day-to-day -day basis. Number 9. Vanilla Flavoring We all love beavers, the nice little aquatic rodents. They're so popular that a lot of teams worldwide pick them as their mascots. But they aren't just cute animals we love to film for our animal videos. They're also pretty intelligent creatures who've provided humanity with quite a lot of insight into the matters of aquatic hydraulics. It's no secret that they build the best dams and dikes in the entire animal kingdom. But despite all these cool qualities, what we didn't expect was to find out that they also have a huge contribution towards an infamous human food item. If the thought of having a beaver component in your food is making you cringe, wait while we tell you which part of the beaver we obtain this component from. In case you're an ice cream lover, especially the vanilla-flavored one, or a dessert enthusiast who loves the vanilla essence in their cooking on a routine basis, then you ought to know that the food industry employs a substance called castorium. It's a very fragrant, oily secretion with a yellowish color and is obtained from glands located in the cloaca of beavers. This substance is a vital ingredient in the food industry, especially when it comes to reinforcing certain flavors like raspberry, strawberry, and most of all, vanilla. Who knew that the disgusting origins of this substance won't be able to stop it from becoming commercial gold? And if you love vanilla ice cream, there's no denying the fact that you've probably consumed a wild amount of this beaver anal gland product. Number 8. Eye Opener for Cheeseburger Lovers Here's a fair warning. If you're a fan of cheeseburgers, it's better if you skip this part because after hearing this, you'll never want to get another McDonald's in your life. In this section, we'll be showing you a certain substance usually referred to as the pink slime or glue by the media and food industry. What has glue and slime got to do with burgers, you may ask? It's a pink gooey commercial grade beef additive that's added to the ground meat to increase its volume, weight and quantity. 
It's formed by grinding the negligible parts of beef, fats, tendons, and other connective tissue. This is processed in a huge centrifuge until a thick paste is created, and the paste is then treated with ammonia and citric acid to purge all the possible microbes. The finished product is then sent to meat plants and restaurants, ready to be mixed into what they tell us is pure meat products. This unappetizing mixture is probably a part of the sandwiches and burgers you're eating, and you don't even know it. Just remember that this pink slime is present in that double beef party burger you're planning to order, so think again. Number 7. Indian Street Food If you're a foreigner in India and the hunger pangs are hitting you stronger every minute, just head back to your hotel or go to a well-known bigger restaurant. Believe us, this one piece of advice will save you a lot of trouble, especially in your gut. Never eat at one of those street-side shops and food stands in places like Bombay or New Delhi if you want to avoid getting severe diarrhea or don't want to end up making your gut a home to parasites. You can see how poor the conditions are with these trailers set up in the hot weather in dirty, unclean places littered with garbage everywhere. Most of these dishes sold on streets are very popular local specialties, but the way they're prepared will have you running for the mountains. It's common knowledge that the street food in India is almost always exposed to microbes and insects, especially flies. The vendors rarely ever use gloves to prepare and serve the food, the counters are untidy, the cutlery is washed with dirty water if it ever is. It's safe to say that most basic hygiene standards are blatantly ignored here. Now, you will say that the locals are eating and they're fine. Yes, but they've lived here and consumed this all their lives. Their bodies and immune systems have adapted to their locality, and they're not always fine. We understand it's hard to resist the appetizing vada pav or butter chicken from the streets, but it's better to miss out on some food than to spend your vacation traveling between your toilet and your bed. Number 6. Surimi Sticks As opposed to popular belief, this appetizing snack is not at all made from crab meat. The reality is far from it. These sticks frequently served with salads don't come from any meat, rather they're made from the white fish flesh like Alaskan hay or North Pacific hay. Turns out there's not a single shellfish component in these sticks, as opposed to what is proudly advertised on the packaging and in commercials. The flesh of these white fish is of low gastronomic value and is thus used commercially. This tasteless flesh is mixed with salt, starch and chemical preservative. This mixture is then vigorously stirred to obtain a bland and flavorless white paste. This gets further horrifying because the waste is then artificially flavoured using crab flavour obtained from the shellfish waste. The paste is pretty gross and unappetising before it hardens and is processed to its final form. Also, the controversial origin of the ingredients we've discussed should be enough to make you reconsider your choice of munching on surimi sticks. Number 5. The Ugly Secret Behind Street Food in the Third World there's no denying that street food has gained a lot of popularity over the years, especially because of the flourishing tourism industry, food tourism shows, and social media influencers trying to hype up small vendors selling on street sides. But did you know that behind the glitz and glamour of these delicious dishes lie horrifyingly unhygienic practices? And in third world countries, most people aren't even trying to provide clean food. If you saw what goes on behind the scene of these open-air stalls, there'll be some major regrets regarding that yummy snack you had in the streets of Mumbai. As you can witness, scenes like this man kneading the dough with his bare feet are irregular in the poverty-struck nations. The beautiful and fresh-looking vegetables you see being used in the making of these foods are probably washed with sewer water, and if you saw how dirty and sweaty the hands that kneaded this bread on the screen were, you'd probably throw up. It's not just the cooking practices and dirty surroundings that contribute to the filthy nature of this food, but also the body hygiene of the people making it is equally nasty. So it's better to just watch National Geographic or TLC travel show hosts trying out these exotic foods rather than enjoying them yourself and ending up in the hospital with diseases like cholera, typhoid or gastroenteritis. Number 4. Jaggery or Gur. The advent of refined sugar has no doubt revolutionized the entire edible industry. From restaurants to packaged food factories and even in all our homes, sugar has become a kind of staple. There are many refined and unrefined forms of it available in the market, but some of these we just don't recommend. One of those is jaggery or gur. It's an unrefined form of sugar consumed abundantly in India and Pakistan. This form of sugar is created by heating huge quantities of palm syrup that's stirred in enormous pots, all the while being exposed to dirt and debris from the surroundings. 
Once the sugar is reduced to the required point, workers wearing sandals hop in the containers and collect it. To say the least, they step into the jaggery with their shoes on. To make things worse, this jaggery is then solidified in a mold that has probably never been washed and is then stored in even more unsanitary places. Our advice? Just stick to the white refined sugar if you're not a local who has a stomach strong enough to tackle all the germs and dirt in this jaggery. Number 3. Bees in your doughnuts Who would have thought that these tiny cakes made of glutinous rice seasoned with sugar may have actual bees in them? These are quite popular among Asian consumers, especially in China and Japan. Moki looks like a gooey elastic dough that's later cut up into smaller pieces and sold on the streets for quite a low price. But because the stalls making and selling these are usually situated on the streets, the strong smell of sugar attracts hundreds of honeybees to the dough that swarm all around it. And how many of those can the maker actually swat away, right? So there's a good chance some of these will end up being a part of the moki with a rolling pin. Therefore, it's no surprise your sugar-filled moki also has a bunch of bees in it, and if you're unfortunate, its venomous stinger might prick you and leave you with a sore and swollen mouth. Number 2. Chinese Vendors Recycling Sewage Oil Now, this one is just extra nasty. As it turns out, many restaurants and street vendors are maximizing their profits by selling the most unhygienic food to ever exist. They're recycling sewage oil. Yep, you heard it right. They directly collect the oil from city sewers into buckets. These collectors are horrible people who adulterate this awful oil and sell it to local restaurants and street food stalls. Experts have shown concern regarding this hideous practice and are of the review that 1 in 10 of all the meals sold in the country is subject to this distasteful practice. So basically, one-tenth of Chinese street food is fried in this oil. And to further increase their profits, these vendors are collecting animal fat and dead rotting animal parts from the sewers of slaughterhouses and use it to make frying oil. Despite the authorities trying their best to put an end to this business, it continues to thrive and rob people of their health. Number 1. The Indian Flatbread Who doesn't like crisp and freshly baked Indian bread with their saucy lentils and curry sauce? This bread is a staple around the subcontinent and is being consumed on a daily basis by people in streets and homes. Its gastronomic supremacy in India is unchallenged. You all must be aware of some of these baking specialties of South Asia, like the paratha or naan. But were you also aware that in a lot of places the dough for this bread is kneaded in dreadfully unhygienic ways? Just like the one being done in this video you see. Look at how this baker kneads this dough using his bare feet, and that too on the dirty, bare floor. The filth in the place and on the person's feet is visible from far away. This dough once kneaded will be flavoured with a special spice to induce the legendary flavour after which it's cut into pieces and loaded in the oven to be baked and served to unsuspecting customers. We don't think there's any need to say more about this. Just avoid this flatbread. That's all for today. We know you guys are going to have a hard time sleeping after watching this video, but aren't you glad you found out about these horrifying practices? Now you can quit eating those unhygienic things. Tell us in the comments which one of these made you throw up. For more awesome and entertaining content, keep following our channel. See you all next time.